is chapter four, the final chapter in the legend of the sea robbers. Not a lot of different things. There's no outposts. Don't forget to collect your friend cards that you got in chapter one, two, three. So ours are over here. Um, there are chess tokens. The way this board is set up is there are two mystery islands. So as you can see right here, those white spots are the mystery islands. Out on those mystery islands, there are three types of hexes. There are gold, which um, those these gold mines work. If you find it, you get to choose whatever resource you want. You can also build settlements and cities on there. You can find water hexes. Now, depending on how chapter three went, we did not collect enough of the sea robbers to not be penalized. So in our game, if you find a water hex, one of these, there are four of them, will be placed on the water. Now to get rid of that, you must surround the hex with your ships. They can be whoever's ships, but as soon as you have four, it is now defeated. This is removed from the game. So it can happen three more times on three more water hexes. When you do defeat and remove this token, every player who was involved in the defeat, so orange, blue, and red, will get a chest. But not until it, the token has been removed by surrounding the water hex with four bolts. The third type of hex that you can find is a spice hex. There are four of them. When you find a spice hex, you will automatically get a spice card. There are three different types of spices. These are shuffled. They are resources, so they go in your hand. <clears throat> they do count towards the seven hand limit. So beware, you cannot trade them for other resources, but you can still steal them from other players. You can trade them. So they are shuffled. When your ship discovers a spice hex, you get one card. Now. You cannot build settlements on the spice hexes, but you can place merchants. That's these units. To place a merchant, your shipping route will come out and you will place your merchant on an intersection. Okay, merchants do not get placed in the middle, they just get placed on an intersection just like you would a settlement or a city. This shipping route is now closed. You cannot move your ships. You may only have one merchant of your color on a spice hex. If there are two spice hexes touching like this, you cannot place your merchant here where they attach your merchant must be placed on a single spice hex. It must be definitive. When you place your merchant on a hex, you get one of these cards. These are trade cards. So they look like this. So this card would allow that player to trade in two brick for a spice card.
Each one of these, you can have up to three because you have three merchants. Each one of these also allows you to have two additional cards in your hand when the robber is rolled. So normally you must have seven or less. If you have one card, it would be nine, 11, 13. So you can have as many as 13 cards in your hand to not be affected. Very similar if you've played Cities and Knights to a city wall. Now, the spices, as you can see on this task board here, at the very bottom, you can see how to get victory points with your spices. It's as simple as discarding them. You can discard three of a kind or one of each. So when you discard three of a kind or one of each, you get two victory points using the Catan chits as points here. We'll explain a little bit more, but we're going to set up the board. We'll show you how we set up our board. Uh, we do not leave the island spaces empty like they tell you to in the books. We'll show you how we set ours up. We'll be right back. Now that the board is set up, as you can see, we, we, don't, we don't leave empty spaces on the board. We find that the board shifts too much around. So what we do is we just, we shuffled the hexes that are supposed to be out there and we randomly place them. Um, so to tell if they need to be flipped over or not, we just put Catan chits on top. They are not victory points. We do not collect them. They're just to show us which tiles will be flipped over. We've already rolled. The kids are going first. So remember we're placing three settlements. One, the first one will have to be on the coast. So the kids will place. Dad, mom, and then mom. Kids will place two in a row. Orange, blue, and then mom will place her ship and two roads, followed by dad and the kids. And that is the order of placement. Let's see who wins the final chapter.
Game over. Dad won. Orange won. 14 victory points. He went a little bit castle or city crazy here. <laughs> now, one, two, At the beginning. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven for the largest army, twelve, and then thirteen, 13 fourteen for one spice trade. For trading the spice. So that is chapter four. We've kind of. We, we lost some players, I'll be honest. We lost some players this game. It could not keep the interest of Ryder. And I'm not sure normally he's really into Catan. It, this one could not keep his interest. So I'll, it is a little bit more heavy. when it like, And by the I, time you get yeah. out there with the spices, it adds on a little bit. So... <laughs> It takes a while to get to that spice, and I think if he could have just hung on a little bit more, but... Even though that was the last thing I did, that was my favorite part of the game. Yes. Yeah, it's getting to the spice, is like, oh, I can, I want to see what these other ones are. Yeah, so it, it takes... You don't get it to enjoy, up. honestly, you don't get to enjoy the spices because they're too far out. Get. That's, but that's game. That's the Keep playing and have fun. Well, it's...